Welcome everyone. I'm Fred Stumple from Garrett College, your moderator for today's Maryland Online Webinar, Open Educational Resources, New Tools and Resources from Most, the Maryland Open Source Textbook Initiative. We are pleased to welcome our presenter, Colleen McKnight, who has over 10 years of library experience having worked as a librarian at Hood College and Historical Society of Washington, D.C., and is currently the Director of Library Services at Frederick Community College. She was in the inaugural class of the Maryland Online Leadership Institute, Molly, and serves on the executive boards of Maryland Community College Library Consortium and the Congress of Academic Library Directors in Maryland. In 2019, Colleen was named the most Commons Library Fellow and has been working with institutions across the state to support their OER work and connect them to the most Commons website. I uh, just wanted to thank Colleen for coming to present today. And if anyone has any questions, please include those in the chat, uh, as well as uh, after the presentation, Colleen would be glad to answer any questions. Colleen, it's all yours. All right, thank you very much. Hi, everyone, I'm glad you could join me today. So I'm gonna be sharing my screen and there is a little bit of interactive at the beginning of this, um, but then after that, it'll be mostly demo of the most commons. So thank you, Fred, for that introduction. And again, I am the Director of Library Services at Frederick Community College. I'm also the most commons library fellow. Um, and if for this session, what we're going to be doing is I want you to be able to understand after this session the basic fe features and functions of the most commons. I want you to understand how most commons can be used both within and across institutions, um, especially in Maryland. And I want you to know about the OER resources avail available for and from Maryland institutions, because the most commons is specific to Maryland, which is what makes it a little bit different from some other OER repositories um, and referatories that you might know about. Before we get started, I do want to know just a little bit more about you because that'll help me kind of tailor a little bit what I talk about uh, during this webinar. So if you could go to menti.com and you're going to enter the code 78099160. I'm going to go to the next slide, but you're still going to see that menti.com and that code. And what I'd like you to answer is if you can let me know um, who you are. I am a faculty member, a librarian, an online learning professional, so an instructional designer or a technologist, or an administrator. And if you're more than one of these things, you can actually add more than one of those into this. So it's menti.com and it's 78099160. So you can choose more than one option, but this just helps me know who's here so it can give me a sense of what I should focus on again. go ahead and let everyone kind of get to that. And if no one's used Mentimeter before, it's a very nice little tool. We've been using it a lot in our remote courses um, and it's been really, really helpful for interaction with students. I see I actually have a pretty good mix of people, both faculty members, administrators and online learning professionals, which is great. Um, so I'm going to go to the next page because I also want people to see just where you are with the most commons. Have, are you so um, either you strongly agree or strongly disagree with these statements? You are very familiar with the most commons. You are most interested in finding OER resources. So that's the main thing you are here to do or you are most interested in how most commons can support OER on your campus. So just let me know, um, strongly disagree, strongly agree with these different statements. And it looks like, all right, so people have some familiarity with the most commons, which it's probably good that you don't have a lot. That's why you are here. 
Um, and it looks like we're kind of even with most interested in finding OER resources, as well as finding out how most commons can support OER on, my, on the campus. And I'm going to be able to talk about all of these things with you. So we are going to be talking about all of that. Let me move forward. So to get started, the most commons, it is a free collaborative online space. It is designed to support Maryland faculty and staff in adopting, adapting, creating, and sharing OERs. So that is the purpose of the most commons. The four ways it can help specifically is it can help you find resources. It can help you share resources. So resources you're either creating or resources you are using at your institution. It can help you organize those resources in specific ways, and it can help you connect either across institutions or within institutions, especially around OERs. So those are the four ways that really the Most Commons can help you. The main features for the Most Commons are our resources. So those are resources that are either created on the Most Commons website or are linked to the Most Commons. So they're hosted somewhere else, but there is a link to it on the Most Commons our collections, which are ways that we can kind of curate resources around specific subjects or specific topics, types of resources or institutions create, can create collections as well. Groups, which is the main way that you can kind of connect. So groups can be created uh, on the most commons. Anyone can create a group who is registered um, and they can be used either within an institution or across institutions. And finally, those institutional hubs, which are kind of special pages that group together collections and groups and resources that are specific to an institution. And the main thing I'm gonna be doing today is talking about those features and how they do the four things that the most commons can help with, how they can help you find things, share, organize, and connect. So we're gonna start. Um, and the most important thing is to know how to get there. It is mostcommons.org. Uh, OER, most.oercommons.org. I'm gonna go to that right now. And on the most commons page, you anyone can come in and start to search. So you do not have to be registered to actually find resources on the most commons. If you want to add resources to be a part of a group, uh, to connect to a hub, those are things that you do have to, have to register for. It's very, very easy to register. You just go into the sign in register right here, hit register. You're going to be using your um, institutional email. Right now, uh, Most Commons is um, limited to registration for people who have a Maryland university or college email. So it can only really, you can only register if you are a faculty or staff member at um, a Maryland institution. Uh, but you can come in, you can do that. And again, you don't have to register if you just want to find resources, but if you want to organize resources or share resources, registration is what you want to do. You get an email after you filled out this registration just to verify your email address, and you can go right in uh, and join. So I'm going to sign in. So here I am at the most commons. Very easy to go ahead and just do a search right off the bat right here um, at the search box. Um, you can also start to look at our collections or even some of our hubs or our groups. But I'm going to start just how most people start, which is I see a search box, so I'm going to search it. And I'm interested in resources around communication. But once I search, you're going to see we've got quite a bit of information in here. So there's quite a few resources that have already been connected to the most commons. We've been um, building this resource since 2019, and it just gets better and better as more people add resources in. Most of the resources you're going to find are resources that you'd find at a lot of other um, OER repositories. So for instance, Most Commons is kind of, it's called a microsite of the OER Commons. So if you've ever used OER Commons, a lot of this will look familiar to you. But we have a lot of the big sort of providers in here. So OpenStax is in here. You'll see Minnesota State, OpenDora is in here. Um, we've got Washington State, Ohio is in here. So lots and lots of the resources that you'd find other places. What's nice is you can easily filter things down um, over here on the side because 756 uh, results is quite a few results. And the main one that we have is the subject area. The subject areas, they're really, really broad, um, but you can, they do kind of narrow down as you start to go through them. So I'm interested in communication around business and finance. 
So if I click into there, you're going to see that I can actually make this even smaller. So I go to accounting, finance, management, marketing, public relations, but that's bringing my search results down a little bit more. The other ones, there's a bunch of different filters here. I'm going to point out the ones that I think are the most helpful for when you're searching. The next most helpful one is educational level. This really gives you a sense of what level is this course at. Community college and lower division, think of that as your 100, 200 level courses. College upper division could be anywhere between 100 and 400, um, but really 300 and 400 level courses. And then of course, graduate, professional, career tech, and adult ed. And I do wanna point out that we do have career and technical resources. That's something that a lot of people don't realize. There's OERs that go beyond just your usual um, four-year degree or two-year degree resources. Um, I'm interested in the community college lower division. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down, which again, brings me down even more. Then you've also got your material types. So this goes back to the idea that most of the times when people are starting to look for OERs, they're really looking for textbooks. But there's open educational resources out there for lots of different types of things, not to just textbooks. And this will help you kind of break down, hey, what is it that I'm really interested? In? What is out there? So you have lectures, you have assignments, um, you've got teaching learning strategies, textbooks, all sorts of things, activity labs. Some of these will all be connected because if you have a full course, you might have each of these pieces in there. But I am interested in a textbook, so I'm just going to click on that textbook, um, which again brings me down even a little bit more. And then finally, the media format is another resource that just gives you a sense of what exists in this OER. Is it just text? Is it an ebook? Is it downloadable docs? Maybe there are videos that are available in it. And this just helps you again limit down to what is it that I'm really looking for? Um, and the fact that there is more types of resources out there than you might realize. I'm interested in videos. So I do want to see if there's textbooks that have videos. This brings me to just these six resources. So a lot of these, they look pretty. They're from the big um, OER groups. So Sailor Foundation is a big group. And of course, also OpenStax. You'll notice Rice University is always the provider because they technically are the people who um, create OpenStax. But we do have that provider, provider set there, which is OpenStax. So that's an easy way just to kind of filter down what you're looking for, find what it is that you want. I am interested in this introduction to business. So I'm going to click on that. And this gives you a sense of what you're going to see when you click on a resource. You've got a little description here. You've got those subject levels, those things that we uh, broke down a little bit. You have the license here. So that gives you a sense of what is it that I can do with this resource for people who aren't as aware of Creative Commons. Um, CC BY is the most open type of license, which means you just have to give a, uh, attribution to who created the resource, and then you can make whatever changes that you want to it. Um, there are a couple of things that I want to point out to you. Uh, we have these endorsements over here. The endorsements are one of the ways that we're really using this to help Maryland institutions, because what that endorsement does is it tells you that this college is actively using this resource right now or has used it in the past. That helps give you a sense of, oh, this is a resource that someone is already using, which means it might be a good resource for me. What's nice with these endorsements is if you click on that, you can actually go see all the other endorsed content that they have used. And there's even another place where we've started to build a place where all this endorsed content exists, which I'll show you in a moment. Once you're in here, you can go ahead and view that resource. If you click on view a resource and you notice that this little most commons tag is up there, that means you're actually still in the most commons. It's gonna let you do some things with this resource uh, in the most commons that you want if this did not exist. Some resources do exist where they can kind of put them in this frame with the most common stuff up here. Other times it'll just totally link you out. The reason I point this out is this is not actually the link to the actual resource itself. The link to the resource itself is under here under this link. So if ever you are looking through most commons and you want to add this link to say your LMS or somewhere else, it's probably best to use the link that actually exists, not the most commons link. So that's that link right there. This isn't true for everything. Like I said, some will take you out of the most commons website, but some of them you will find um, kind of embed in it. What's nice is I can click through, I can look at this, I can say, yep, I like this resource, um, or I want to take a look at this resource a little bit later, but I want to know that I found it. And this is where registering can really help in how you can use Most Commons to help organize things you're finding. 
which is the save button right up here. So if you want to save something, you're going to notice this My Items section. The My Items, I'll go back and show you this. You can get to them actually right here if I click on that My Items, and I'll show you after I save this how it goes there. Or if you are back at the main site, you just click on your little profile, and it'll bring you to a drop down that'll show you your My Items. So I want to save this. I don't have a folder yet. Here are my folders, but I can easily create a new folder. So I'm going to say this is communication resources that I want to look at. It's going to be in my item, so I don't have to change that. I'm going to create it, save it. There, I've just done it. So now I'm going to be able to go back, go into my items, go to my little communication folder. There it is. So I can start to go through most commons and start to pull things in automatically that I can go back to and find again. To get to that from the main page, it's just right here, your little group, and you can go right into my items and find um, all the items that you've saved or found. So this is a really nice tool to help you organize as you're trying to find OERs that you might like. Are there any questions so far from what I just talked about? Nothing yet in the chat, Colleen. Great, thank you. A couple other things I want to point out on this page is the tags. So one nice thing about tags is all of your subjects, those are things that the system itself decides. You can, you can only pick what the system decides. Um, but the tags, anyone can create tags. You can create those tags when you create it, and I'll be showing you how to create resources. And if you are somebody who has come in, you'll notice that you can add tags. So if you have a tag that you think makes this resource easier to use, you can go ahead and add that as a member of the Most Commons. Um, one nice thing about the tags is a lot of times tags are common across resources. So you can click on a tag and see if other resources have that same tag, which is another way to help you find more resources that might be in common. So that's a quick way to, if you find one good resource, go ahead and click on those tags, see if other resources come up. Uh, some of the, yes. I'm sorry, Lama oh, asked, oh. do they link to Google Classroom? You know, I don't know if they do or not. We do, there are some um, LIS opportunities where you can link directly to resource, to learning management systems um, through the most commons. If you were interested in that, go ahead and reach out to me. Um, I don't have information at my fingertips around how that works. It's something that has to be set up with your um, online learning group and the most commons, but I do know that they have that. And I know that they do it for the big ones, so Canva and um, Brightspace and Blackboard, but I don't know if they do it for um, Google Classroom. But if you want to reach out to me, I can reach out to the people who actually um, host the most commons and find out if they do. My guess is that they might or they must because I know K through 12 especially uses Google Classrooms a lot. Um, and at least at the OER Commons level, the K through 12 is, is a big deal. So I would think that I would have that capability. But reach out to me after um, this and just send me a quick email and I'll be able to, to find that out and get back to you. And I'll have my contact information at the end of this too. Any other questions at all? Oh, I saw another one pop up in the chat. <laughs> Kate, Any other questions? Can you oh, sorry, search by right. author rather than subject? You can search by author if you wanted to. So at any point in time, you would be able to go in and do searches for authors. You'll notice that, I'm just going to go into this one right here, is you do have authors here. So you can actually click on an author and see if they've authored anything else at all. If you go back to the search, um, we only let you limit the search to subjects and educational level at this point, but you should be able to do a search for authors as well. Any other questions? Okay, if there's no other questions at the moment, I do want to show you one resource that we've actually just created uh, in the last couple of weeks. I mentioned those endorsements. 
And we've actually created an institutional site that pulls all of those endorsed resources together. If you go under hubs, you're gonna see it, it's the Maryland map. You can also go to see all hubs and you're gonna find it over here, the Maryland Higher Education Institutional Collections. Again, look for the Maryland map, that's the where those collections are held. And what this is, is when someone goes into a resource, I'm gonna to go to Anne, Anne Arundel real fast. What people can do is if you are at an institutional level, a resource administrator, that's something that can be set up in the most commons, that gives you the opportunity to endorse resources and to approve resources that are coming from your institution. Um, this is something you would just have to reach out again to me and I would be able to set this up for you. Um, right now, there are quite a few colleges that have resource administrators who are doing this. Obviously, Hagerstown is one, Anne Arundel just set up um, this fall. Garrett College is another one and Harford Community College as well. What this does is you can go through if people are adding resources, if people, um, so that's resources that are created at your college. If you know that there are resources that are being used at your college, you can create this little endorsement link that allows you to pull all those resources together. What's really nice about this is again, once you create it, that endorsement, it is going to automatically create a collection for you. And that collection will be added to this site. So all of these are resources, are colleges that have some endorsement on some resource in here. So the collections are being created. You notice that some of them might just have one right now. Some have a lot more, 10, Montgomery has 14, all the way down here with UMGC, which has over 90 resources. But what's great about them all being on this hub is that if I search this hub, what I am searching are all of these collections. So I am only searching resources that have some kind of endorsement from one of these colleges. And this is a really nice way to kind of start your research off because you're gonna only be looking at things that have either been created in a Maryland college or being used in a Maryland college. So it's a nice way to see, hey, what are my colleagues, what are my other colleagues doing? What resources are being used? So that's it, there's, there's 56 results that come back with uh, when I do a search for communications. I can narrow this down in the same way. You'll see the same subject areas over here that we had before. And then I can start to really look through and see what is here. Um, what's great is a lot of people are starting to add content that they have um, created. So right here, this is actually a critical reading, critical writing uh, handbook uh, that was created by the English faculty at Howard Community College. It looks like it's on press books. So this is a resource that was created at Howard as well as the, some of the big um, resources, like this is Galileo. Um, so you know that this is a resource that's likely being used um, at another college somewhere. And you can go in, you can actually look at it, see, oh, looks like Warwick is the one who are using this and take a look at that resource. So I really, really recommend taking a look at this uh, institutional collection. If you are an administrator or a dean or uh, someone who is has some kind of um, uh, leadership role in OER at your institution. Again, it is very easy to set up this sort of endorsement redor uh, resource administration that would allow you to go in and endorse some of this content. The more resources we know that are being used at colleges in Maryland, the easier it will be for other people to begin to adopt those resources. Um, you can also, like I said, go right into a resource if you just want to see, hey, what's the University of Baltimore doing? And in fact, Un University of Baltimore has been doing a lot of, this is a lot of their own resources that they've created. Um, and they've been doing a lot of good work and adding it into the most commons so that it's available for other people to find. This is one of the things that I'm most excited about around the most commons. And the main reason that it was created was to help connect Maryland institutions with each other, to help you guys share your resources out. Um, any questions about this? Colleen, we have a question from Marcy. Sure. Uh, can you talk about the type of resources? Looks like there is a text, infographics, et cetera. Are there any limitations or object, um, I'm sorry, sorry um, objectives for resource types? <clears throat> There's really no limitations around resource types. Um, actually, let me go ahead and hold that question just for a second, because when I get into how do you share a resource, we can talk a little bit more about the resource types and kind of how you can share resources out. 
Um, Cause I've I kind of helped everyone who had a resource, you know, how do I add this in? And we've been able to figure out a way to do it. The most important thing is that it is open. That's the main thing that we're looking for. We wanna have you share resources that you are fine with other people using in some way. Um, but if you're using it in your class and you think it's an important resource and you wanna share it with other people, um, we would figure out a way no matter what that type of resource that was for you to share it. But I'll talk more about that because I, I think looking at, uh, at the point of how you add resources will actually help with that a little bit to answer that question a little more. Any Anne also questions? asks, um, Anne asks, how are resources vetted for authority? So this is one of those things where um, with authority, I can tell you when you add resources, there is a point where um, if you are sharing it from a resource that comes from the outside, the um, somebody gets to approve that resource before it goes up. Um, from things that are created in the most commons, that is something that there is not actually a, a, a stop for it, but only people who are actually registered in the most commons can share resources or create resources in it, which means they have to be faculty or staff from a Maryland higher education institution. So at that point, you would hope that that alone would be enough to know that there is some authority there. We do not have specific rubrics that look at it. I can show you some of the professional development resources that are actually on the most commons. So you do have to double check. You do have to look through and say, does this have the authority that I need in it? But know that the only people who are adding content to this are people who are um, from a Maryland higher education institution. So that does help. It's not, it's not just public, not anyone can add information into it. So I hope that kind of helps answer the question, um, but you do would, would still need to look through and do due diligence, just like you would for any kind of open resource. Uh, any other questions? Got another one from Kate. I understand that the point of OER is to share freely accessible resources, but are there any copyright limits on how these sources can be used or shared in the classroom? So that kind of comes down to what the Creative Commons license says. Let's see if I can find one that talks a little bit. There's one in Norwood. So most of these are going to be open. There are a couple that are going to be free, but not necessarily open but we try to make sure that those things are noted. So for instance, as I'm going through here, you're gonna see the Creative Commons license. So CC by SA, that means that you can use this resource, you can change this resource, you can remix it, you can share it. But if you do that, you must make sure that you attribute who created it in the first place. And if you make a change to it, you have to use the exact same Creative Commons license that they did. You will notice down here, this copyright restricted one. That is because it is a free resource that is being used, but it is not an open resource. At this point, you have to know that you can kind of share, you can link to this resource um, if it is freely available, but you wouldn't be able to download, copy things, change them and things like that. So there are a couple of things we try to keep them as open as we can, which means you don't have to worry about the copyright issues. But if you ever see some of these copyright restricted type things, we usually try and put a link that here's where you can find the terms of service, here's where you can find more information about it. So we do try and make that pretty clear in either the description or in that license piece. But the vast majority of what's in here is open content. Any other questions? All right. I do want to point out one other place where you can sort of um, browse through content, uh, which is our collections. So that institutional um, collections hub, that pulls together the institutional collections, but we do have other collections as well. And that's under the Discover tab. If you're on the main page, it's also the See Curated Collections button right here. Um, you can go right there, slowly but surely, as it gets there. Come 
one had most. Today is the day that most commas decided to be a little slow for me. Because otherwise, it wouldn't be a webinar without it. Let's see if I can get this to go through. What this collections tab does, which hopefully we can get there, is it is, there we go, um, it is going to show you collections that we've kind of pulled together under certain topics. On this page, we have um, anything that has been a most grant and been added to the site. We tag those so you can get a sense of what have people been doing with the most grants that they've gotten. Um, I also have tried to highlight some of the resources that are not just um, resources that are used at an institution, but are kind of specific to an institution. Um, the Maryland College Open Pedagogy, that's part of, they have a large grant um, that they got, a, nation, a national grant, and they've been doing open pedagogy work with that. So a lot of this in this open pedagogy one are um, a lot of assessments or homework assignments, but from an open pedagogical um, perspective. So these are really interesting uh, resources for you to take a look at. The other really nice one is, and this is a new one, are these Ohio Link OERs. Ohio um, also got a very, very large grant from their state, um, I think over two million to start to create some resources that are open educational. So what this does is pull together um, the resources uh, that they've that they have created. Um, what's nice about this is, and this is actually part of, I mentioned that you can actually build resources in the Miss Commons, and that is what this is built in. It is not the resources resource themselves, but it pulls together all of the different types of materials that are found for this abstract algebra, algebra course and then links to them. So for instance, this would link to the actual probably textbook. Then you've got your learning outcomes. You've got a couple of course outlines and sample schedules um, from the different approaches that they're doing, the worksheets, you've got videos. This actually links out to, I think, their YouTube channel, but it pulls together all of these resources that they have created, not just a textbook, but around a whole course, all in one very easy place to find them. So these are really good. This is a really good resource um, that we've added pretty recently uh, to the most commons. The other one that I really, really want to point out is these UMGC OER resource lists by subject. I've actually already used this content to help some of my faculty at FCC uh, find some OERs. And what this is, is uh, as you may or may not know, UMGC moved to going to all or as much as possible free and open resources for all of their courses, which means they have done a lot of work to find good resources. Now, they have so many resources that it's actually really hard for them to put all of those resources directly into most commons. It would take a long time for them to do that. It's going to take a while. But they have added their resource lists. And you can see there's over 90 resource lists here. So under a bunch of these different subjects, you can go through and you can see the full list of the resources that they are using. So for instance, they have this fashion open educational resource list. Um, it's not going to have a lot of information here. You got to go right to that view resource. But it is just a Word document. You can download that Word document. Again, this was actually built in uh, the most commons um, author tool that we have. So I'm just going to download that document just so you can see what it looks like. And here they are. And they have links out to all of them. You can see what the license is. You can see when it was last updated or the publication year. But here's everything that they use in their fashion open educational, um, in their fashion, any of their fashion courses that they might have. So these are really, really, really good resources for you. We hope to, over time, add these directly into uh, the most common so that they, you can find them directly. Like I said, that's going to take some time for us to do. But I, again, I've already used some of these to help my own um, faculty. So I really recommend taking a look um, at this UMGEC OER resource list. You can actually find that one in the big collection here. It's right there, that second one in. It's also listed under the um, institutional collections. Um, if you scroll down, the institutional collections are um, by uh, alphabetical order. So if you scroll down, you'll see those lists by subjects. 
They've also got a lot of their professional development resources. So if you're interested in how they have done this, um, a lot of that content is available here. They've got some best practices. They've got content needs, identification templates, course design roadmaps. They just have a lot of information here that could be really, really helpful um, for anyone who is looking at putting uh, OERs um, at the institutional level. So I really recommend taking a look at all of their resources. It's been great that they've been able to share them with us. A couple of questions pop in, Fred. Like. Uh, Lama asks, is the UMGC OER searchable? It is searchable. So if you notice here under the search resources, you'd be able to go in and do a search for that. They are very, very broad. So keep in mind that you're not going to be able to necessarily, you're not going to be able to search the Word documents. You're only going to be able to search um, any tags or any of the um, uh, titles or the subjects that they've done. So that is the only thing you're going to be able to search, not the actual Word documents themselves. That's one of the reasons why I want to make sure that we can start to add those resources in. It'll make it much more searchable. Um, what's nice is 90 resources is a lot, but it's not terrible. You can still narrow down by subject. So let's say I'm interested in history. Let me see what history they've got. So there's the history ones. And you'll notice that all of their history is under one resource list. So it's probably best right now to do it by browsing and then just limiting to subject areas to see what they have um, rather than searching just because it's it's going to be a pretty narrow search because it's just based on what they've said. So that's how I'd recommend actually looking through those. Any other questions? All right, so that is the main ways to kind of find resources. Again, once you find a resource, Always remember, so I found this resource. Um, I can open it, but I can also save that right there to my My Items. Um, again, I have to make a folder to do that, but I can start to build up what, what is it that I found, what is it that I want to look through more, and kind of find that information. Um, I do want to share a little bit about, because uh, I see I'm actually running out a little bit out of time. I do want to share a little bit about adding resources and to go back to what it is that you actually are seeing in here and what kind of resources can, can you add to it. The easiest way to add a resource is a submit from the web. And that is just anything that is posted anywhere. If you try and add a resource that already exists, so the URL is already here, it'll actually stop you. So you can't, it's pretty hard to do duplicate things. Um, but if you want to add something, so this is something, anything that is hosted somewhere else. It can be hosted, um, say, if you have a press book, if you're using a resource that's online, you can actually pull it in here. The one question we often get is, because um, I know a lot of OERs are built within a course management system, you wouldn't be able to link something like that because that requires a login. It's not actually available to anyone. I do believe in Canva, there is a way to do public courses. So if you have a public course, that doesn't require a login, you would be able to link to that in the most commons. Um, there are ways to share resources that are um, created in an LMS that you would like to allow to be open for other people to use. Um, and then I'll explain that when we get to the other way that you can add resources. When you're adding a resource, you just enter the resource URL. It's gonna bring you to this page. It'll pull some metadata in based on whatever URL that you were coming from. Some of that you might have to change up um, but you, that's very easy to do. So this is an English 101 guide. Do a description. So as much as you think people need to know to find the resource or to know what this resource is about, you would add authors. Authors do not have to be someone who exists in the most Commons. So you can add whatever names that you need to, um, to provide attribution for this. For conditions of use, this is the important one. If it is your resource, you get to decide what that condition is. Um, if you don't know a lot about um, uh, Creative Commons, I'm always here to be able to help decide what it is that you'd like to do, um, how, what, what do each of these allow you to do. Um, if you don't see anything, you can always say, I don't see any of these. I'm not really sure what this is. And this is the nice thing about when you're adding a resource in, um, there is that moment where someone else is going to see it and someone else is going to approve it. That'll either be me or if you have a resource administration at your site, it'll be them. And we can make the changes to that license because that's one of the main things I look at. 
um, is this correct license? Is there another license? And I would be able to update that if needed. There are a couple of things that you must add in, subject areas, media formats, material types, languages, as well as any tags that you wanna add. This is all what we librarians call controlled vocabulary. So you can only pick from the dropdowns. Um, there are, the subject areas are very broad, but as you, you can scroll through and see, we've got sort of big subject areas and then a couple of secondary subject areas underneath them. Probably best practice is think of pulling at least one primary subject area. So that's the ones that are out here a little bit. And then if it makes sense, one or two um, secondary subject areas. You can add as many subject areas as you want. Again, this doesn't, you, doesn't have to be perfect. It's all about what makes it easiest for the people who you think should find the resource. This is all about finding that resource. So add as much as you think is important. Again, there's gonna be someone who's gonna be able to take a look at it. So we'd be able to make changes to that. Ollie. Media for, yes, go ahead, Fred. Uh, sorry, um, a follow-up uh, with the UMGC OER searchable. Um, uh -huh. The document's safe to download. Um, yes, yep, so those are all safe to download. Yes, they are. And another question was, uh, do the resources include video content or is it all written? Um, is that a question about the UMGC ones or just in general? Yeah, Here. probably it is by Anne, if Anne wants to follow up. Uh, with that question? Um, so this is not just written. So resources on the Most Common site, there are more than just written resources. Now, are they hosted on the Most Common site or are they linked out? It, that depends on what it is. You'll notice under media format, we have all sorts of different types of formats. So you've got video, you've got graphics, you've got interactive even. Um, you even have mobile here. So if it's a mobile resource. So there are definitely different media formats. When you do a search, you can limit to that media format. So you can limit it to videos. Um, I actually have a collection. Let me move out of that collection. If you scroll down, we actually have a collection that's a video audio lectures that we've pulled together that you'd be able to do some searches in there. Now, a lot of times those videos, it might not just be one video. It may be a full course that has some video in it. But yes, there is more than just written materials listed um, here. Um, and that is part of why that media format is important, to let people know what is this resource. For material types, again, you don't just have textbooks. They could be a lab. It could be a homework assignment, case studies, lots and lots of different material types. Pick, again, the ones that are most important and that actually fit whatever your resource is. There is language as well. So there are different languages on here. The vast majority are English. Um, and of course the English is here, but you, there are different languages that you might be able to find. And then tags, this is for you to decide. So it can be anything that you want it to be. One nice thing about tags is as you start to type very slowly, you're gonna see other pop-ups come up. That means this is a tag that actually already exists in the most commons which means you can get a sense of, oh, if someone else has tagged it, this, well, let me add that tag in, which just helps connect resources a little bit more. If nothing pops up, that's fine. You can add as many tags as you want. It doesn't have to be something that already exists, but it's just a nice way to kind of see, oh, other people have added these things. So for instance, general education and general education course, you can add both of those tags in, doesn't matter, really add, again, this is really about, what is it that people might search because this is a good way for them to find things is through tags. Colleen, the, yep. I have a follow Go ahead. up here as well. Sure. Uh, also, if we are creating a resource, is the digital platform provided or would we find our own like Pressbooks? So uh, what I'm showing you right now is if it existed already out there, but I will show you after I kind of talk through some of these, how you can add things directly into the most commons. So that is the authorship tool that allows you to do some other types of things as well. Um, for the additional descriptions, that's that educational use, that primary user, the educational levels, accessibility. So if there's some kind of accessibility uh, with your resource, you'd be able to tell people how it is accessible. Um, you can see that these are optional, but I do recommend adding as many as you can. Uh, you hit that continue, it moves you into, uh, it will show you basically a copy of your record or a preview of your record, and you just hit submit, 
it does not automatically go live. It'll go into pending mode. And then either your resource administrator or myself will look at that and approve it. Um, once it's approved, you should see an email from Ms. Common saying your resource is approved. So I heard lots of people talking about, how can I add things if I don't have a place for it yet? So let me talk about open author, which is our other type of way to add resources in. So open author, is basically the authoring tool that is native to most commons. I won't lie, it is clunky as far as authoring tools go. It is not the best authoring tool out there, but it is the freest authoring tool out there because it is free for anyone to use. Um, you have to again register to be able to add things in. And most of how people have been using the um, author tool is to simply not necessarily create things in the most commons, though some have, but more to attach resources. I mentioned that if you have a resource that is built in your LMS, but you want to be able to share it, one thing that you can actually do is create a open author resource record and then attach your resource as a common cartridge. Um, the anyone who is in the online learning group understands what I'm talking about, uh, but there's ways to have uh, common cartridges that can be ported over to whatever LMS that you happen to be in. So if you want to share something in that way, you could do that through attaching a re attaching it through here. So far, we have been able to attach everything. Um, I had a group who had a resource that they created, um, I believe in. Um, Captivate, and they wanted to have the instance of Captivate of what they've created, but they also wanted to share it uh, in a way, the files, so that people could take it and change it as they wanted to. And we were able to add the Captivate file onto this. And then we just did a cross search. And we said, if you're looking for the file, go ahead and go here. If you want to see the resource itself, go ahead and go here. So you can almost attach anything to this. It's really simple to use. You just enter your resource title. You can add a little image if you want. Section name, think of that as um, if you remember when we were looking at the Ohio link resources. Let me go back to them real fast just to give you a sense of how it looks a little bit at the end. Basically, what they have done is this is their resource you'll notice that they have units and then these lessons. Think of each section as a lesson. So you could have more than one lesson under a section. So I create this, my section name is testing one. I do have to enter some main content so that I can either be what this resource is. These are lists of resources. If I have a link out, I can go ahead and do that link out there. If I have a video, you can actually um, insert a video into here. Um, we have been able to save MP4s onto this, um, so you can host things in here um, if you want it to. It may not be able to embed directly, but again, you can always attach it. And then I can attach that resource. I can insert a new section, so if I want to add more, so let's say I'm going to have test two. Here is more info. And then I can even add more resources. You can keep inserting sections into it. At any point in time, if I'm like, nope, I don't want this. I'm just going to, yes, I want to delete that section. I can go ahead and do that. If you need to get back into this section, you do have to click on the section again. It'll open up. That's a little bit confusing um, as people are kind of looking through stuff. When you attach, very easy to attach. Just attach that file. You can name the resource, whatever you want, save it, there it is. You can attach more than one resource under a section as well. So it's a really easy way just to kind of add content in. If you have not been finished with it, you can save it. Where your saved content goes is under your items. So there is my draft for a lesson and it'll say draft. So this is where when you save something, that's where, it, that's where you will find it again. You can preview it so I can see, all right, 
you'll notice there's instructor view and student view, because if you notice down here, you can actually go in and add instructor notes and other things like that. That is more if you are using this to sort of author your resource, um, but there is a way to do that. Most of the time it's gonna be kind of from the student view standpoint, but there it is, there's my test. It's, it's not very, it's not pretty, it's very simple. Um, it's very bare bones, but again, it's free and it does allow you to kind of add those things in. Once you are ready, so you've previewed it, you've saved it, you're happy with it, you just hit next and this will look very familiar. It's following the exact same types of things you have to do. You've got the overview, you've got the attribution. So this tells you what the license is for it. Um, and then the subjects, education levels and those other descriptors. You say you have the right to share these. So you do have to make sure that you do have that permission if it's um, you're using content that is not all your own created content and you hit publish. Now, the one thing with this is we, there is actually no um, pause for this. Once you hit publish, it is live on the site. So that is one thing that is a little bit different um, from resources that are submitted from the web. Um, I think they are looking at finding a way for at least uh, resource administrators to be able to have a pause um, and be able to review content that is coming from their institutions, but that's not in place yet. So once you hit that publish, it is live. I'm going to pause for a second. Yep. Oh, yeah. I just want to let you know we're at uh, 10 till, but yep. we have a question from Kamala. Uh, are there are some criteria the work needs to meet in order to be approved? And how does the whole approval process work? So again, under the submission piece, um, submit from the web, really the criteria is that it is complete and that it, it has the correct license type. There is no criteria really beyond that. Um, this is not meant to be a repository that is tightly controlled. It's meant to be a free place for people to share things out. Um, again, only people who have Maryland emails from Maryland institutions can register and add resources to this site. So there is control at that level. Um, not everyone can come in and just add a resource in. Um, I do recommend that, it, I mean, the main thing is if it is a resource you are using and it is open and you think it is helpful for other people to know about it, then please add it in. I think that's a great way to do that. As far as is there a test for accessibility or is there a test for quality around it? Not at this level. Most Commons isn't set up necessarily to do that. That would be more at your own institutional site. As you're creating OERs and adding OERs, that's some of that content, that you're going through some kind of rubric to decide why you're using that content in your site. One of the nice things about the Most Commons and why I think it's really important that you have access to what other um, institutions are using is anything that is found in here, they're actively using that in their course, which means that it has gone through some kind of quality control, either within the classroom itself or through the institution, which is why this is one of the best places for you to find the resources that you are looking for. If someone's actively using it in their course, then I would hope that that is a good resource to use. So that is really where the criteria is. You will notice, and this is something that we're looking at at most to figure out how we can do this, because I know that quality is a question that a lot of faculty have, is there is actually an evaluations rubric that is built into the most commons. So there are ways for us to actually add those kind of rubrics in to say, this passes these um, quality measures and quality checks. We have not put that into place yet, but it is something that we're looking at. Um, a lot of that has to do with just time and being able to have people available to do that kind of work. But it is, it is possible in the most commons, which is really nice that it is built into that platform. We just haven't used it yet. And I am pretty much out of time. So there are other resources. I didn't really get to the connecting with groups and other things. Um, but I think this group was most interested in the finding the resources and the um, sharing the resources. I hope I answered the question about what kind of resources can be shared and really it, it can be anything. So uh, if you have it and you're using it and you would like other people to know about it, then please, please share it. Um, I do wanna point out groups just really quickly, just so you get a sense of what they are. Anyone can create a group 
And what a group really does is it helps you sort of pull together resources a little more specifically. I'm going to use the Western Maryland OER Collaboration Group as an example. So they are starting to pull together resources under these areas. Um, you can save resources just like you do to your My Items. So it's in that same save group. If you're a member of a group, you can save whatever you want. You can add things in. And you can have discussions uh, in groups as well. These discussions can be both public. I'm not a member of this group, but I can see everything here. So keep that in mind. But there are ways to make discussions private. Resources can never be private. There is not a way to make a resource private um, in a group, but discussions can be. I just want to point them out just because it is a way for you to um, pull together things. It is a way to, per, to find ways to collaborate across um, institutions. Western Maryland OER has been doing that with this. Um, there's a couple of other groups as well. There's a librarian working group um, and some other ones also. Um, just also real fast, because I know there's a lot of administrators, what the institutional sites do for you is it basically helps you pull together collections as well as groups um, that are specific to your institution. Uh, I'll use Warwick as an example of this. What's nice is then people who are part of Warwick, they can come in, they can search the resources that have been pulled together by Warwick in this. And that means that hopefully these resources are specific or more targeted to Warwick and what Warwick needs. You'll notice they've created a couple of collections um, over subjects and OER providers. And this is, gives you a sense of a group can do a little bit more to help you break down what it is. So here they're using this to really help them organize what are we using in our Art 101 class or Com 101 class? This is all the resources they're using in that English 206 women's literature course. So it just helps them organize their stuff a little bit more. Um, to get an institutional site, that is something that you'd have to contact us about. Um, you can contact me and let me actually, um, I'll move into so you can see um, our contact information. But those are kind of all the resources that are available to you in the Ms. Commons. Uh, so let me get to that. Colleen, we had one more question. I yep. know that uh, Anne works with you, it looks like. but Yes, she does. <laughs> Hi, <Anne. laughs> Maybe some of the other folks might benefit from this question. In general, what kind of things are we not allowed to load? I'm thinking about PDFs of book chapters. So if you do not have permission to use it, I would not uh, add it in. So there are certain things like for fair use, so if it's a copyright and you're putting up book chapters for something that's a copyrighted resource, that's probably not a great idea. It goes outside um, the fair use option and it's kind of uh, within a course you might be able to do it because you have the educational piece. This is an open site, so it's not part of a course. So if you have any copyright issues, if you don't own it, if it's not explicitly open, if it's not just a link out to a freely available thing on a resource, I probably would not share it. Now, one of the things you can do is if you have a reading list, you can mention, you can share that reading list. You can say, for instance, if you use a lot of library resources in your course, those are free, but they are not open. But you create a reading list to say, oh, we use this article and we use this one and we use this one. And that allows other people to go out and find maybe copies that they could use that are legally available to them um, that they could then find. But you wouldn't want to add the resource it's, itself. But reading lists are a great idea. If you have resources that you know aren't necessarily open, but they are free, but you're not sure if you can share the resource itself, just sharing that you're using it can be pretty powerful. Okay, so next steps. Register, begin sharing resources if you have them. Feel free to join or start a group and reach out to me if you're interested in some of those higher level institutional administration pieces. Um, my information, I'm Colleen, uh, so you can get me at my actual email, which is cmcknight at frederick.edu. You can also contact the most people directly. Um, I get those emails as well, so that's most at usmd.edu. Sorry, I ran out of time near the end, but I hope you guys found that helpful for the find and the share, which seemed to be what people were most interested in. Um, do we have any other questions at all? Well, as those might come in, I wanted uh, from Maryland Online, thank everyone for attending today's webinar and thank you so much, Colleen, for your presentation. Our webinar recording will be included on the MOL or Maryland YouTube channel and I'm going to sh share that uh, link along with the uh, 
Maryland Online professional development link, and I also have Colleen's email again. So if you wanted to reach out there. Thank you, Fred. All right, well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, and I hope everyone has a great rest of the week.